How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel. And if you're building a system this year, chances are you've seen the huge asking prices on DRAM modules. So what exactly is up with these high prices and what can you do about it? Well, you're about to see the answer to both questions. Oh, and by the way, as of this video's release, I'm launching a Patreon. So please make sure to check out the link in the description for more details. I distinctly remember doing a budget PC part picker build for someone around 6, 7 or so months ago and going with cheap 2133MHz RAM for $58 on offer. And I can certainly tell you it wasn't the extreme value addition you see here for no less than $103 on offer. It actually had some sort of heat spreader on it if I remember correctly. One of the RAM kits I used, the G-Skill Trident Z3600 MHz CL16, was $125 back when I got mine. Well, now it's $190. To get a better idea of what's going on, let's start with the primer on DRAM and who is actually making the RAM chips themselves. Well right now there's three big players, Samsung Semiconductor accounting for a little over 50% market share, SK Hynix sitting at around 24.8, together these two sit at around 75% of the market share right now, and in the third spot Micron at around 12%. In the last 13% or so of the market, there's a bunch of other mostly Taiwan-based companies, the biggest of which is Nanya, a company that was well known around 10 or 15 years ago for some great DRAM they made. But for these companies, the desktop DRAM market is definitely not the most profitable sector of their business, or the core of it for that matter. They also manufacture NAND memory modules, server memory, and memory for the mobile market. Also, this is a combination, a mixture of factors contributing to high prices, not just one thing. And this leads us nicely into reason number one for this price hike, the mobile race to LP DDR4. It's estimated that more than 40% of the capacity of these plants goes to the mobile market, smartphones and tablets. While a few years ago only the most premium smartphones had LPDDR4 on board, the LP stands for low power by the way, nowadays a whole bunch of brands are coming in with this type of memory and since figures sell, some of these come with high amounts like 4GB onboard RAM per device. Naturally, the law of supply and demand comes in and all these companies shift their attention to LPDDR4 production. Now, it's not that LPDDR4 is the same thing as desktop DDR4, but plants have a maximum capacity and if more than 40% of this is allocated to the mobile needs, obviously other segments will suffer. Besides this, the mobile segment is easily the most profitable at the moment with everyone wanting LPDDR4 in their phones and especially bigger brands that need highly binned chips to report very high standby times on their devices. Add to this the NAND department which is again more profitable than the desktop memory one and it's easy to see why desktop DRAM is so far behind. I previously said that current prices are a combination of factors so let's move on to reason number two, the process node switch. These top 3 big players either recently switched or are switching from 25 nanometers lithography to 20 or 21 nanometers. Switching a fabs production process is not like switching gears on a car, it's much more complex and time consuming. Often this brings with it reduced capacity and after the switch to a lower lithography, yield problems. Yield problems again compound the production capacity issues, generate losses per wafer accounting for unusable chips and generate delays. Combine this with the increased demand from the mobile market and the fact that they're willing to pay even more to secure stocks from these fabs and you got yourself an even more ignored desktop segment and higher prices due to yields and limited production capacity. And oh by the way, the production plans for these companies are not switched overnight, they're set in stone for the next 3 or so months to ensure minimal losses and profitability, so a decision they made at the beginning of the second quarter is still in full effect. Things like power outages or nearby plants exploding, real examples by the way, certainly do not help the situation, but to be fair these are not planned. Reason number 3 contributing to this conglomerate of problems is increased demand from the desktop and server DRAM market. I'm only treating the desktop segment here, but here's what's going on. First of all, let's see how Intel CPU buyers affect this. Ever since Skylake launched with its 66 and 6700K, the media have been beating the drum on is it time to replace your 2500K. While I do believe that due to lower overclocks of Skylake, some people coming from Sandy Bridge held off at the time, there certainly was a good influx of people who switched to the 7600K that reaches 5GHz even more readily than their Sandy Bridge did. 
Naturally, all these people couldn't keep their DDR3 RAM, so they went out and got DDR4, therefore increasing demand. For AMD CPUs and people that held off on upgrading from their 2500Ks or FX8 CPUs or whatever, the situation is pretty much the same. They can't keep the RAM, so they're going out looking for DDR4, further increasing the demand. OEMs also panic and stock up on DDR4, further adding to this increased desktop demand. So you've got three major concurring factors all contributing to prices rising. High desktop DRAM demand since the beginning of the year, low interest from the manufacturers since this is not where the real money comes from at the moment, and problematic production and yields due to the switch they made or are making from 25 to 20 or 21 nanometers. Okay, so what can you do in this situation? I don't expect RAM prices to start falling by the year's end, but you need DRAM for your new platform of choice. Well, to be honest, there's not a whole bunch that you can do, but the most sensible thing to do here is to buy used. Buying used RAM is the least risky component you can get in your system. RAM very very seldom fails and most manufacturers offer lifetime warranty with their products. Obviously the used prices have gone up, don't get your hopes up, but this way you can at least hope to be around the prices you had 6, 8, 9 months ago. This will still save you 30, 40, 50 or whatever dollars and you can fit in your desired budget. Another thing you can do, and this is for those wanting higher frequency RAM and are running Ryzen CPUs, is use lower frequency and overclock it while dropping the latencies a whole bunch. For example, going from 2133 MHz CL14 to 2933 CL18 or even higher. Some kits will do this with a lot of added voltage, I've done it, it's okay, it works. This works out fairly okay for Ryzen despite the high latencies since it enjoys the increased data fabric speed stemming from the RAM as well as the greater bandwidth the increased DDR frequency gives you. Other than this, you're pretty much just SOL. Prices will continue rising until they plateau and only after that will we see them dropping slowly once demand goes down and every smartphone and tablet on the face of the planet has LPDDR4 under its hood. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this slow explanation and if that's the case, I wanna see your comments, questions and suggestions down below. Don't forget to check out the Patreon link in the description and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.